Hey there boys, today I want to talk about the best way to farm the Brave Weapons by doing Onslaught. Now that we've had a few days to sort of figure things out, find strats, I'm going to go ahead and go over them so that you guys can farm for these new powerful weapons with maximum efficiency. So starting things off with general strategy that applies to everybody, we're going to talk about the way that you get these weapons and the fastest way to get as many as possible because that is pretty much how you're able to get these weapons with good rolls. After we have the general things covered, then we'll have a look at the specific builds and weapons you should be using to get this activity done. So starting things off, you want to manage your new economy with these newer tokens that they added that allow you to buy the brave weapons from the chest. It's very similar to the keys and dares at the treasure chest, and with this, you have to turn in 10 of these tokens of bravery. Every time you do that, you have a chance at the weapon, and this follows the attunement. You can attune one weapon type in the content vault, and it will make it so that you have a 50% chance at that weapon, and then if you don't hit that 50% chance, you get one of the other weapons. So most people right now are hunting for edge transit as it's pretty much the only good PVE weapon in the pool right now. So I highly recommend focusing edge transit. It's a very powerful tool. It has the envious bait and switch role that we all love from Cataphract if you don't like doing trials. It also has access to cascade point with bait and switch at the same time, which then you can use something like rain of fire or grapple reloading to fix the lack of a reload perk. Or if you get really lucky and land the 1 in 450 chance of getting 3 of the correct perks on a shiny version of the weapon, you could use Envious Assassin, build up the magazine, and then switch to Cascade for DPS. So those are the reasons why people are hunting down the edge transit like crazy. It's an extremely powerful heavy weapon, and it honestly does feel like it's power creeping rocket launchers, even when they do have Gellahorn. That being said, if you're somebody who is looking at the long term of getting all of the weapons eventually in the least amount of effort, I recommend that you for now hold on to your tokens which you redeem for getting these weapons until the mountaintop releases. While obviously the DPS from Edge Transit is going to be absolutely insane, we already have very good DPS options that are more than capable of one phasing every boss in the game right now. However, what we don't have is access to something like mountaintop in a current light level. Mountaintop is more of a utility weapon, and if you've been following the channel, you know how much I love utility. If you didn't see, the mountaintop was changed to give extreme knockback to yourself whenever you shoot your feet with it, and I have a video covering all of the cool movement tech you can do with it, so I'll leave a link to that in the description if you're interested in seeing all of that, it is a lot of things. And in addition to being this insane utility movement tool, it's also going to have pretty good damage as it does more damage than even the double fire frame grenade launchers, which previously were the highest damage grenade launchers in the game. So if you want to be smart with your tokens, I recommend waiting until mountaintop drops and just running the activity a lot to farm edge transit for now, and then once mountaintop drops, then you go and spend all of your tokens. So you'll see that I am building up my tokens right now, and I hope that you will do the same because Mountaintop is going to be a very important part of the meta, and I honestly think it's going to be a higher priority than Edge Transit, just because of the demand we have towards DPS weapons versus utility movement weapons. So next up, the activity that you'll want to farm is going to be Legend Onslaught. Every time you do a boss wave or the 10th wave, and you kill the boss in the pyramid ship, you get two chests and a handful of tokens. When you do normal onslaught, you only get one chest, which is literally half of the rewards. However, legend is far from twice as difficult and even farther from taking twice as long as normal. That being said, the loot doesn't scale up very well as you get through the farther waves in legend onslaught. So what you'll want to do is farm either the first 10 or maybe the first 20 waves if you have a team capable of doing it and you will be able to get these weapon drops every time you do the boss. My recommendation is if you're on a team that's good enough to get to wave 20, play until wave 20, because it doesn't really take any longer than doing the first 10 waves to get to wave 20. However, you get to skip the introduction, which takes several minutes, and obviously there's less loading screens, which helps with your sanity. Also, I notice you don't seem to get match made teammates in Legend, so make sure you bring teammates into this. It is a very hard activity to do solo, and at best, takes a long time to do it solo. Remember there's a lot of way to find teammates now, either on the Discord LFG or in Discord servers in general, as well as using the in-game Fireteam Finder or even the app on Bungie I believe still has a Fireteam Finder available. So give those a go if you're solo. For my gamers that do have Fireteams, definitely go for the 20 waves, 
use effective builds and powerful weapons, and just try to clear them as fast as possible. The early waves are not very hard, remember it's only legend difficulty, it's not like Grandmaster or anything. And because of that, you should remember that you can play very aggressively. Playstyles like Strand Titan, Sunbracer Warlock, even Ceno spam works because there's so many yellow bars. There's a lot of ways to clear these waves fast, so just find what suits you and your team and get it done as quick as you can. If you already know what builds you're going to be using and what is the most effective thing to get through, then this is going to pretty much mark the end of the video for you. But for people who are looking for the effective builds and weapons and what to expect from the actual activity itself, we're going to get into that now. Starting things off with Warlocks, there are three main angles you can take as a Warlock in this. The first one is the obvious Sunbracer setup where you just kill everything and spawn trap the enemies as soon as they spawn. This is something you can do with a lot of different methods, but Sunbracers is very good at that and it will often leave the grenades there long enough that it will kill multiple spawn waves of enemies. If Sunbracers isn't your cup of tea and you have a team who can coordinate and run something like Triple Cenotaph, it's very effective to be able to mark all the enemies and then just shoot rockets all over the place. As it turns out, Wolfpack rockets destroy everything in all activities, so it is very effective to do this as well, however it does require a level of coordination. And finally there is the Strand Warlock angle. This is one I would only recommend if you already have a Solar Warlock as the Well of Radiance is very useful in the boss waves. What the Strand Warlock is really able to do is just to add damage to heavy bosses or things with lots of health, and they are also able to grapple through the rift part where you have to go and dunk the spark down the long hallway. On Strand Warlock you can spawn a tangle in and then throw it and grapple to it, and using the Wanderer aspect it goes in a straight line, which will take you straight to the end and let you skip all the enemies and dunk it. Remember the enemies do despawn after you dunk it, so you can completely ignore them and just rush to the end as fast as possible. Next up are Titans, and there's pretty much one angle Titans can take in this activity, and I think it's the obvious, and that is Strand Titan. While there are other builds for Titan out there that are okay, and you could definitely clear the activity using them, Strand Titan is by far the fastest and most effective, and has extremely good survivability and damage, and because this is an extremely crowded environment, then obviously these Synthoseps and Worm Gods are very easy to maintain and keep the melee damage up. And finally we have Hunters. I do honestly think Hunters might be the weakest of the three classes for this activity. In general, Hunters have very effective survivability and boss burst DPS, however they are very much so lacking in their ag clear capabilities. However, if you have teammates who are more powerful with their ag clear, like having Sunbracer Warlocks on your team, you could certainly add value to the team by having a Hunter and focusing on the DPS of the Majors and bosses. The main builds I've seen is obviously Celestial Nighthawk, which is extremely effective at dealing with Tormentors and at just dealing a big chunk of damage to bosses, which you are always trying to melt to get through the activity as fast as possible. You could also run something like Lucky Pants with either Void or Stasis Hunter. If you are on Stasis Hunter, you are able to Shatter Skate using the Rift and get through that part of it very quickly, because that is basically just a time waster segment as it is. And obviously Lucky Pants are very powerful in their own right, I do think that Hunter's best value is against the Tormentor, especially if they have Celestial Nighthawk. If you get a teammate to apply a Divinity Bubble on the Tormentor, you can pretty much always hit a Celestial Shot, which will most of the time one-shot them. Remember, if you are trying to apply Divinity to a Tormentor, that you have to pop its Shoulder Plaids before you can get the Div Bubble to work. And that's going to do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching, it is much appreciated. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, all that. I really like to read comments, and I do get a notification on my phone every time someone sends them. So I do read every single one. Make sure you leave your thoughts down below. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye